Alright, I want to show you how to make polygons in Desmos and we're going to achieve that by generating sets of points. Uh, be before we dive into any of that, there's some setup that we need to do, starting with the constants that we need. Just want to give you a heads up that with this method, these values are truly constants in that after you make it, you won't be able to dynamically change it after it's generated. You have to go back and re remake the points. I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with the constants. We're going to have n is the number of sides that we want. So um, I want to start with a hexagon. And I'm also going to define a rotation, and this is going to this is going to dictate a how how much or how much we want to rotate our polygon on, on um, around the center point here. So that's going to be so. If we're more comfortable with working with degrees, you want that, but we're going to be using trig functions to drive these points and so I would recommend using theta underscore sub d and the reason I'm not using theta is because I believe if um, theta is actually one of the uh, I guess reserved variables in here so if you set theta equals a value it would actually plot something same thing with r so, it, so if you want to if you want to make your own um, radius that uh, you, you might want to call it R sub something rather than just an R. So theta is going to be this value in radians, and that's going to be pi times the degree over 180. This value coming from the from the circumference of 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 a, of a unit circle. And we're, and we're taking this fraction of it. And, and we can start testing these points. Actually, there's one more constant I want to define, and that is a scale. And this scale, let's call it, let's, let's, call, let's give it a value other than 1 or 0. I'm going to give it 2. And now let's plot a point on here. I'm going to plot, then we're going to plot this, it's a scale times, we don't even need the multiplication dot. If you want the dot, um, it's that asterisk symbol on um, on either your number pad or, or, um, or on top of the 8. So it's 8 times the cosine of the angle here. If you type in the uh, Greek letter that you want, um, it'll automatically convert for you. If you want to use capital Greek letters, you can. Just make sure you start with with, with a capital letter. So if it, oh, I guess I guess that doesn't work for theta. Maybe it works for. Huh. Interesting. Today I learned. And so if you want that capital um, symbol, you, you you would you would just type in sum and and. Uh, and uh, it'll, it'll it'll give you more values to play around with. That's besides the point. Then we're gonna go a times sine of theta sub sub d there. And you can see here that uh, let's make it easier to see. You can see that now if you drag this value around, you can see a rotating along. Um, or around the center point here, and and a good and some other good values to have if if you if you want is the x translation and and the and the y translation. So so for the x translation, we typically use h. You may have seen that in your textbooks or in other sources you 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 may have come across, and and so now. Yeah, in this case, moving the h, h in a positive direction will actually move our point in the positive direction, and same thing with k. And mind you, this is happening 
after you rotate. So if you want to rotate it around this point here, 2, 2, you set it to 2 there. And this has a scale of four, so let's bring this back to one. So now you can see that's at a zero degree rotation, it is it is riding right along with this as x equals two line here. Or y equals two. So this will make it easier to see. So so now if you rotate it. You can see it's rotating around that point there. I think for us, we want to we want to set this range, this degree range to be if from minus 360 to positive 360 as in degrees. And because we're using polygons, we don't want it to fall below three vertices, three edges. And I'll, I'll just set it to 20 for now. You can make it however high you want. All right, let's let's clean up this nonsense here. And everything other than this bottom value here, we're going to be keeping this this guy here. We're, we're going to we're going to be generating through through a series of points. And uh, and uh, we'll do that right now, actually. So we'll call this. This is using something called I I forget the name of it. But essentially, we're defining a mapping from one function to a to a set of points, and the way that's done is I have one mapping. We'll call it F, and that's going to get mapped over. So the way you draw this arrow, you you, you type in a dash. That's a minus sign, followed by uh, whether it's a closing angle, angle bracket or a greater than symbol. Um, that's, that, that's you. You put those together, that and I, I draws that arrow there. And that's gonna get mapped over to a list. And we want this to be the first point, and that's going to be. That's gonna be um when th that's going to be a starting point that we're just using so that's a times this is going to be our x mapping we're going to do the same thing for our y mapping so let's start with the x a times the cosine of what was it I believe it's blanking right now theta sub d and then our subsequent points are, are going to be dependent on that. I'm almost sure I did this wrong. All right, so it looks like I, de I defined this mapping a bit early. So, so this, so this capital F we're going to be using to, um, this is going, this, this is what we're going to use to generate our list in real time. Um, but what we want to do first is is define our initial conditions. So define we actually we're actually not using one, we're using a times, so this is this is the x value, a times the cosine of theta underscore or d. Want to make sure we're like what I was telling you earlier, whatever angle you set in here uh, you're basically locked into it once once you when, once you start generating your points, and then we want to do the same thing for for g, and she's going to be a times the cosine of not cosine sine of of d, and let's use our constants. Add h, add h. And next thing is, we're, now we can bring in that capital F. But actually, not yet. We it wants to get the length of these length list first, so that 
every time we iterate for a new value, that list length is, is, going, is going to grow and we're going to be using the new list length each time each time it gets built to, to to calculate that new angle offset. So each time we iterate, we, we get we get a new length, and based on what what that new length is, it's going to determine where that next point is going to be put. So we want and is well, I, well, we can't use that now, can we? Because and is already defined up here. Want this to be the length of f, and we want we want another another length to be g here. All right, now we can start bu building our lists. Now when it's done, we define it. Uh, we define a find a set as going to be f maps to, and we want to join the current list with. So this value is is what we want the next point to be. So as I was so I was referencing the length earlier, and that's going to be. The we're, we're talking about the x axis right now. It'll be a times the cosine of we want the full three sixty. That is, this this is tau. So 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 pi radians gets you halfway around and. Tau is just simply two times pi. So, so if you, if you, if you if it makes more sense as to you to write two times pi by all means. Um, I'll, I'll I'll use two pi for readability. And we want to divide this over however many sides we have, and and that's going to be n. And what that angle is going to be is is that l that 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 we have earlier. So so that that is this length. Right here, and the same pattern is going to follow for our next list. Let's close out the two. All right, and then we repeat the same process. We use capital G, a G maps to our our current list. So we want, and we want the next elements to be. This guy here. Uh, this is actually not cosine. This is going to be sine. All right. Now we want to limit the amount of points that we have to this many points here, which you which we have defined earlier. Let's put a comma here. And so I want to define. I to be the set. I want L to be so L is this length here, and that's going to be less than or equal to this value here. And and this is the function that we, that we want to put into here. And we'll do the same thing. For J maps well, or J is the other length that's going up to N. That's not going that and then we're not using F, we're using G. Alright, all this finally at the top. What's gonna what's gonna automate all of this? We're gonna add in a ticker. And this is going to ask us, what do we want to run? And we want this to, let's run our x function first. And this is going to populate, or not ready yet. We haven't added in that x offset, because otherwise our graph would have looked funny. Do we have everything? 
I think we do. I'm gonna run this. See as populate our points. And we need to do the same thing for our J. I'm gonna run this. All of our values have been evaluated, which is good. And now it's time to display our points. So you want our, our list of F, our list of G. What is wrong here? This is the pitfall with using this method. Well, some things that we need to know for sure is that that is that we don't want to show the points and we, and we, and we, and we want to show the lines instead, but it's, it doesn't really help. So for debugging purposes, let's do that. All right, so make sure you don't you don't have too much of a good time copying and pasting because it turns out that this L here is grabbing the length of this F, so we want to use that instead. And the other, the other thing is that we're offsetting by by theta sub d here, so make sure that you have this value accounted for too. Now we run it, grab all of our y points, grab all of our x points. All right, this looks a lot more like a hexagon than it did before. And if we turn on lines here, you can see that these points are now fully connected. So something that they should be aware of as well is uh, if you want to generate a new set of points, uh, you need to, you know, um, I believe if you delete these points, this tickler will continue to run. So you, so you, so you need to stop it. Otherwise, your your your, your thing's gonna it's gonna spam at points. You don't want that. And uh, you also you also need, need to know where it came from, unless that's the point you undid from. So. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you did, definitely, definitely leave a um, like button on there, and uh, and um, and if if you if you didn't feel you benefited from it, that that definitely um, uh, let me know in the comments what you what you felt you've you've um, you've you would have seen or, or uh, what was it that they they want to see better here. Uh, yeah, and just just a bit of a cliffhanger if. Um, so you notice that by past few videos, there were no conic sections featured. So those of you here who, who came here to, to see conic sections and want to know what happened to it, they're, they're, they're coming back in the next video. So keep an eye out for that. And until then, I'll see you next video.